Welcome, or welcome back to Better Preparedness. Day 5 of the South Africa lockdown, and thought I'd talk about pets. Right now, we're in a situation called sheltering in place, so you're asked to stay put. I want to go over a few things that might help for your planning, and also in case things go a different way. There are a few things I really want you to think about. One is documentation. Do you have the documentation right now for your pet? In case things evolve, in case you have to be evacuated, you go to the hospital, especially if you live alone, or if you're the only adult in the house, you know, you need to be thinking about what would happen if this was to escalate a certain way, if you had to relocate, if you were hospitalized, and so on. And emergency management really, really pays off to make sure you also think about your pets. It's a different scenario if you're talking about a cockatiel versus a cat or a dog or who knows a horse or who knows what. But there are a number of things that are common throughout and that is you need documentation. So you need to have things like photos of you with your pet, photos of your pet, records like your vaccination records, the veterinarian, the veterinary, veterinarian records, all those documentations that sort of help explain the, you know, the animal and have a description list that specifies, you know, what, what are the traits of your, your animal, what are, the, what are the names it goes by, how does it respond and the commands and so on. Because you need to make sure that somebody who steps in to help you has what they need. Or if you have to relocate with your pet and you need to be able to show something, that you have that written record with you. And don't underestimate the need for things like a description. Sometimes when we get stressed, hyper stress, we, we, we can't remember, wait, on the dog's leg, is it on the left leg or the right leg that there's that brown spot? You know, it's things that are unique identifiers. And think of your feeding schedule for the animal. If somebody's now moving in to take care of that animal. It really helps if they, they know the animal's routine. So the, the animal gets fed in the morning or it gets fed in the afternoon. And prepare a kit, just like you often hear me talk about uh, here on Better Preparedness about emergency kits. These guys and girls need their own kits too. You need to be thinking about food and water for two weeks at least medications for two weeks at least and you need to think of how the animal would be transported in the case of, of a bird it would be a cage but it may be then a travel container for a dog or a cat you need to get that animal used to it and familiar with it so it's not suddenly panicking when you have to relocate that animal or prepare that animal for somebody else to come pick it up and think about the the items that that animal really likes some of the toys, maybe some blankets that it's familiar with. And do you have a leash? Do you have a collar? Is the animal microchipped? Is there documentation for that microchip? In the case of a bird, it could be a band. I'd also recommend that you put an identification element on your front doors. If you have one or two doors, but make sure you put a sticker that helps firefighters if you're ever sheltering in place. Well, they identify that there is a pet inside. And if you do relocate and you take that animal with you, make sure you also cross that off or put something something that tells rescuers to, you know, to not go looking for your pet inside, if, especially if that pet is no longer there. Think of the buddy system, just like you have in, in scuba diving. Form a bit of a network with some of your friends as to who could look after whom, uh, whoever's pet and practice those things. Have that person take the, the, the dog or the cat for an afternoon so that that can you know, create that familiar bond that the animal is used to the smells of that human. Because it's really important, you don't want to, th to thrust that animal into a very strange scenario, especially if it's a very shy, very sort of timid type of animal. And keep in mind that right now, what we're talking about with this pandemic, right now we are sheltering in place. We are not evacuating. This is not an earthquake, a tsunami, or a tornado, or a typhoon type of scenario where your home becomes destroyed or something. Right now we are sheltering in place. So we are kind of ex spending an extended amount of time with our pets. And these pets, in the case of dogs, are probably not getting the same exercise. Because right now in South Africa they've made specific mention that you're not supposed to go out and walk your dog. Well, what do you do? For the dog owners, I'd be really curious, put, please put in the comments section below, what are your strategies, especially if you live in an apartment? If you live in a house, you might have a yard and you can take your animal out to do its business in the yard. But for people who live in apartments, I'm really curious how now you are adapting. Whatever the pet you have, 
put some comments in the comment section below of, of what your strategy is and what your plan is with your pet. Keep in mind that animals sense stress as well. And if you are stressed and very agitated, they will sense that as well. And then that animal's behavior can certainly change uh, fairly quickly. And the animal could become aggressive or fearful. So just keep that in mind. And especially if there's something like a big fire or an earthquake, that animal can become hyper-stressed. And you have to be really, really careful and be gentle and slow with the animal and expect that animal to be a bit traumatized. And make sure that you know, you're aware of debris if there's ever a massive crisis around you and there's a lot of dangerous debris that that animal could get injured. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Better Preparedness. If you did, please make sure you click that like button and the subscribe plus the little bell so you get notified whenever there's a new episode. You know, right now we're just hunkering down and she is just kind of hanging out. You know, probably a little bit confused why we're even more at home than we always are. But, you know, so far so good. And we stocked up on food, so we've got four bags of, of bird seed, and that'll keep us going for quite some time. Don't expect there'll be a huge run on cockatiel bird seed, but, uh, you know, good, good to be prepared, right? And that way, if we ever had to bring her to one of the few friends that could look, at, look after her, you know, we're well equipped. But we already have a few things set aside that if we ever had to drop her off at somebody else's house, we could do that pretty quickly. Well, thanks for watching Better Preparedness. Hope you enjoyed the episode. And yeah, I think I'm gonna let her... Hey. What? So what she likes to do is fly away. <laughs> See, one thing in my notes about this bird is that she particularly likes to sit on shoulders and that's where she feels very comfortable. And you know, she can sit like this for hours, although she will poop on your shirt. Keep well. Keep safe, keep your social distancing going, hand washing and everything, and be careful when you go out. Uh, if you're going out to the grocery stores, again, practice really good hand care and sanitation. Thanks for watching Better Preparedness, and time to do some editing. I think she'll just stay on my shoulder for the editing. All right, keep well. Thanks for watching Better Preparedness.